PM vows to eradicate Hamas as thousands begin leaving Gaza City after Israeli military orders evacuation for 1.1M residents. Reuters has a quick snap that the Israeli military says it has attacked a Hezbollah target in southern Lebanon in response to a launch from Lebanon. Trunks of protesters gathered near Times Square in New York City on Friday, demanding Palestinian independence and condemning Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu as his government intensified its strikes on the Gaza Strip in retaliation for the wave of Hamas attacks. The protesters, many wearing masks to conceal their identities, out of what they said was concern for their own safety, chanted such slogans as Free Palestine and Netanyahu. What do you say? How many kids have you killed today? Reuters reported. The rally came as police in New York and other US cities said they were escalating patrols around synagogues. Mosques and other Jewish and Muslim institutions, though authorities said they were unaware of any specific or credible threats. US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has said he will meet with Saudi partners to discuss Hamas terrorist attacks against Israel and the need to work together to prevent the conflict from spreading. Blinken is on a tour of six Arab nations on Friday to try to prevent war sweeping across the Middle East. There are fears that a wider conflict may erupt if Israel's determination to crush Hamas leads to a slaughter in Gaza or an enforced exit of millions of Palestinians into Egypt. The US President, Joe Biden, has spoken to CBS News 60 Minutes. Asked for his message to militants holding American hostages in Gaza, he responded, We are going to do everything in our power to find them everything in our power. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but we are working like hell on it. Thousands of people are expected to march in a pro-Palestinian demonstration in central London on Saturday. As police warn that anyone showing support for Hamas or deviating from the route could face arrest, PA Home has reported. The Metropolitan Police Service will deploy more than one. 000 officers to police the demonstration, in which people will be marching in solidarity with Palestine and demanding Israel ends its occupation of Palestinian land. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the UK was doing everything we can to ensure the security of British citizens after the Defence Secretary said it seemed very likely that there are British hostages in Gaza. Three Britons are confirmed to have lost their lives during the weekend's assault on Israel, but reports have suggested at least 17 could be among the casualties. Thousands of Palestinians are fleeing their homes and moving south after Israel's military delivered sweeping evacuation orders for almost half of Gaza's too. Three million people earlier on Friday ahead of a feared ground offensive. The UN said it was told by the Israeli military that about 1.1 million Palestinians in northern Gaza should relocate to the enclave south within the next 24 hours. Hamas urged people to stay put and defy the Israeli military order to evacuate homes. Israeli airstrikes on convoys fleeing Gaza city killed 70 people, mostly women and children. The press office of Hamas said, Hamas said the cars were struck in three places as they headed south from Gaza City on Friday. Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, vowed to eradicate Hamas and said Israel's counteroffensive in Gaza is just the beginning. Netanyahu, in televised remarks on Friday, said Israel was striking at its enemies with unprecedented might. Our enemies have only started paying the price he said. Israeli troops carried out local raids over the past day in the Gaza Strip, searching for hostages and collecting evidence to find people taken by Hamas, the Israel Defense Forces said on Friday. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said the Israeli military's evacuation order is extremely dangerous, and in some cases, 
simply not possible. The World Health Organization, who say asking vulnerable patients to evacuate hospitals in Gaza amounted to a death sentence. Amnesty International said Israel's evacuation order cannot be considered an effective warning and called for it to be rescinded immediately. At least 1,900 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza from Israeli strikes, including 614 children and 370 women, according to Gaza's health ministry on Friday. At least 16 Palestinians were shot and killed in the West Bank over the course of the day. The Palestinian Health Ministry said. A journalist has been killed and six others injured after an Israeli shell landed in a gathering of international journalists covering fascists on the border in South Lebanon on Friday. Reuters confirmed that its videographer Isam Abdullah was killed. Meanwhile, the BBC said its journalists were assaulted and held at gunpoint after they were stopped by Israeli police in Tel Aviv. The US President Joe Biden said he had spoken with the families of Americans held by Hamas in Gaza and that they were going through agony not knowing the fate of their loved ones. He also said he was making a priority of urgently addressing the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Israel Defense Forces ruled out a suspected armed infiltration near the Lebanese border. After warning residents of the village of Hanita earlier on Friday to hold up at home and lock doors. Violence between Palestinian protesters and Israeli security forces erupted in several areas of occupied East Jerusalem and the West Bank. In France, the government raised its security alert to the highest level after a suspected radical Islamist killed a teacher and injured three others in the north of the country. Fifteen French nationals have been confirmed to have died from last weekend's attacks by Hamas in Israel. A flight chartered by the UK government to evacuate Britons from Israel has left the country. A statement from a foreign office spokesperson said. A UK government charter flight has now left Israel, with further flights expected to leave in the coming days while commercial options are limited. Hamas created detailed plans to target elementary schools and a youth centre to kill as many people as possible, seize hostages and quickly move them into the Gaza Strait, according to top-secret plans obtained by NBC News. The documents were found on the bodies of Hamas terrorists by Israeli first responders and shared with the news outlet. They appeared to be orders for two Hamas units to surround and infiltrate villages and target places where civilians, including children, gathered in the Israeli kibbutz of Kfar Sa'ad, the report said. Israeli officials told the outlet that the documents show that Hamas had been systematically gathering intelligence on each kibbutz bordering Gaza and creating specific plans of attack for each village that included the intentional targeting of women and children. The US State Department has sent emails to diplomats advising them against making public statements that suggest the US wants to see less violence amid the ongoing bombardment of Gaza. High-level officials do not want press materials to include three specific phrases, de-escalation slash ceasefire, and to violence slash bloodshed and restoring calm, the report says. The emails were sent hours after Israel issued mass evacuation orders to the more than one million residents of northern Gaza ahead of an expected ground invasion of the region. Thousands of people have been fleeing to the southern half of Gaza before an expected ground invasion of the blockaded strip. Many of almost half of Gaza's 2.3 million trapped civilians began to leave northern Gaza after the Israeli army issued mass evacuation orders in the early hours of Friday. Medicine Sans Frontiers said Israeli forces have postponed the demand to evacuate Al Oda Hospital in the northern Gaza Strip until 6 a.m. local time. The BBC said its journalists were assaulted and held at gunpoint after they were stopped by Israeli police in Tel Aviv. Muhannad Tutunji, 
Haytham Aboudiaib and the BBC Arabate team were driving to a hotel when they were dragged from their car, Mark TV, in red tape, by police, the corporation said. Tutunji and Aboudiaib said they identified themselves as BBC journalists and showed police their press ID cards. Tutunji said, while filming the incident, his phone thrown on the ground and he was struck on the neck. A BBC spokesperson said, One of our BBC News Arabic teams, deployed in Tel Aviv, in a vehicle clearly marked as media, was stopped and assaulted last night by Israeli police. Journalists must be able to report on the conflict in Israel Gaza freely. A journalist has been killed and six others injured after an Israeli shell landed in a gathering of international journalists covering fascists on the border in South Lebanon. Al Jazeera said two of its employees, Ali Brokia and reporter Carmen Jukada, were among the wounded. The shelling occurred during an exchange of fire along the Lebanon-Israel border between Israeli troops and members of Lebanon's militant Hezbollah group. An AP photographer at the scene saw the body of the dead journalist and the six who were wounded, some of whom were rushed to hospitals in ambulances. The UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said the death of a Reuters journalist in southern Lebanon earlier today demonstrates the enormous risk that the conflict will spill over into Lebanon. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department said officials were working to gather information on reports of journalists killed and injured in Lebanon. A spokesperson said, Today and every day, we stand with journalists around the world who do critical work that we all rely on every single day, sometimes in dangerous conditions. Fifteen French nationals have been confirmed to have died from last weekend's attacks by Hamas in Israel, Foreign Minister Catherine Colonna said on Friday. In France, the government raised its security alert to the highest level after a suspected radical Islamist killed a teacher and injured three others in the north of the country. Dominique Bernard, 57, a father of three, died in the courtyard of a secondary school in Arras from several wounds to the neck as colleagues confronted his attacker, a former pupil. France's Interior Minister, Gerald Darmanin, said he believed there was a link between the attack in Arras and the attacks by Hamas terrorists on Israel. He said the suspect, named as Mohammed M, 20, was being closely monitored by the DGSI, the country's internal security services, who had tapped his phone. Rachel Goldberg last saw her son Hirsch Goldberg Pollen. 23, at 11 p.m. the night before the attack, when he left the house with his friend and some camping equipment to go to do something fun. Goldberg was at home in Jerusalem when she woke to the sound of rocket warning sirens. When she turned on her phone, she saw two text messages from him that read I love you and I'm sorry. I immediately know something horrible was happening, said Goldberg. Her daughter searched online and saw the news that the Supernova Music Festival had come under attack. So we knew immediately where he was but we couldn't reach him, she said. In the days since, his mother has tried to piece together some of what happened. Goldberg Pollen, she said. And three friends had got into a car to try to escape the massacre. Rockets started falling into the street. It was complete chaos. So they stopped and went into a roadside bomb shelter. Hamas terrorists came, threw in hand grenades and spraying it with machine gun fire. A total horror. She said her son was trying to throw the grenades out as fast as they came in. After a lull, the terrorists came in and ordered the survivors to stand up. Most people were dead, some were alive, but played dead and some were alive, but badly wounded. Goldberg Pollen stood up. The witness we spoke to said Hersh's arm below the elbow had been blown off, and he'd taken off his shirt to make a tourniquet. 
he walked out and they put him in a pickup and he was taken to the Gaza border, said Goldberg. His phone last pinged at 12.45 p.m. on Saturday at the border. We know nothing about him since, except that he has a critical wound that needs medical assistance immediately. If he is still alive, said Goldberg. Asked if she was worried that Israel's bombing of Gaza might diminish her son's chance of survival, Goldberg said she was not thinking of that. Right now, there is such horrible fighting going on down there, so we're just trying to get any help, clarity or answer that we can, she said. The top floor of her home is filled with families whose children are fighting. The country is at war. It's complete chaos and pandemonium, and it's a terrible situation. I think this country's life is at stake. My husband and I recognize that Hirsch is the most important priority to us, he's our world, but there's a larger picture here. And we're trying to be mindful of that. Haim Katzman, a dual US Israeli citizen, was initially thought to have been taken to Gaza, but was later found killed in his home in Kibbutz Halit. It is understood that Katzman, 32, shielded a neighbor from Hamas bullets, and that neighbor later saved two children. Katzman, whose grandmother fled Nazi Germany and whose grandfather survived the Holocaust, wrote his doctoral thesis at the University of Washington on religious nationalism in Israel slash Palestine. Instead of staying in the US, Katzman moved to the kibbutz, where he worked as a landscaper. His mother, Hannah Katzman, who buried her son on Thursday evening, said. He was always in a good mood and really enjoyed being with people. It was honorable to me how he did his scholarship, but he could also forget about it. Hang out and play music. Katzman was involved in peace initiatives, including Muslim Watch, which monitors the impact of government activity on Palestinian lives. His sister, Noi, an activist with the Israeli-Palestinian grassroots group Standing Together, told the Jewish forward that her brother's death should not be used to justify retribution, a view their mother shared. She said Haim wouldn't have wanted his death to be used against innocent people.